The word passion, when you think of it, what comes into your mind? Words like strong desire, strong liking, an intense um, devotion. Maybe they're some lucky. Now think about the phrase, the passion of the Lord. We encounter it more during the Lent season, especially on Good Friday when we read the Passion of Christ, the last few moments of Jesus until his death. But what does that what does the phrase actually mean? It's such an interesting choice, passion. So poetic, so lovely. <laughs> but how can we break it down to maybe scratch at the surface and find out what it could mean for us? Yes, it includes the sufferings of the Lord, everything that he endured physically and mentally for our sake. But it's also the affection of the Lord. Like I said that at the start, passion is intense desire, strong feeling. It's the, it's the intense pursuit for us, for our redemption as well. Everything that the Lord did from Genesis to his um, resurrection, all for our redemption, all because he was grounded in his decision that if he was to spend eternity, it would be with us, his creation. So the phrase passion of Christ in Latin, patio means suffer. So it was derived from that. And it includes the moments of agony in the garden until the Lord's death on Calvary. So the timeline is agony in the garden till the, cal the death on Calvary. And if suffering includes the emotion of grief, obviously, does that mean that Jesus in only endured grief during that time, that timeline from the start of his ministry till his death on the cross? Maybe we can go back and find another time. Genesis chapter 6, verse 6, it says, And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. Maybe the Lord's passion began then, but there began the purpose to his passion too. God's amazing salvation plan to win us back, to redeem us, to give us eternal life, a life that he foresaw for us. Right at the start when man fell, the Lord knew that he had to create a great plan to save us as well and he put his all in all, his hard work, his passion into it. In um, the book of 2 Kings, chapter 19, verse 31, there's this really cool phrase, the zeal of the Lord will do this. So it's talking about how the Lord will fight for Israel to Israel to be saved from their enemy, Sennacherib. And the phrase that uh, the speaker uses is, the zeal of the Lord will do this. Surely in our case too, on, on the cross, the zeal of the Lord did this. The passion of the Lord performed for us. The great intense love for his bride, for us. And Jesus worked hard for us. He worked hard to make us and he worked hard to redeem us as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, it says, For you are brought with the great price. God could have easily, easily saved us, redeemed us with a click of his fingers because he made us, he, he is God. But he worked hard and he put great passion into saving us. Think of an exam that we um, prepared for, a great, a, a really difficult exam, an exam that we really wanted to excel in or exams that we've had. We work really hard for them. We put our passion into it. We um, might put less, there might be less sleep. There may, might be days of less sleep, um, early mornings, long days of studying. But there's a passion in the work that we're putting because we want to see the fruits of our effort. We want to reap what we have sown. How can, how can we see this? How can we see the great hard work on the cross that Jesus did? Let's read Isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 to 5. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, 
He was crushed for our iniquities, and upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. This was a prophecy uh, made by Isaiah about the suffering servant, Jesus. What did that look like on the day of Christ's crucifixion? How did the Lord really? What was the what were the exhaustive efforts that the Lord took? What was the hard work that he put in to save us? At the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus being in agony, prayed more earnestly. His sweat were drops of blood, we, we um, read. From, from the great anxiety, from the great stress that he's taking, his um, sweat was like drops of blood. At his trial, Jesus was struck by hands, he was slapped, and he was spat on. Pilate then had Jesus scourged. We just, we read Jesus was scourged, but what does that, what, what did that look like? It looked like a whip with iron hooks being used on Jesus, the skin being ripped off, um, muscles, uh, underlying muscles being torn. Um, and the Lord's head being a seat of crown, a seat uh, for a crown of thorns that was pierced for our transgressions. If it were any other victim on that day, maybe they would have hung on the cross from three hours to three days. And as he hung, insects would have come and fed on the open wounds for the eyes, ears, and nose. Moreover, the victim would have hung on the cross with no garments, no garments. But for modesty's sake, paintings represent Jesus with um, at least some form of garment. Even in uh, in the church, statues of Jesus on the cross have uh, garments on them, with so, uh, some form of garment on them. That's what that's the. But that's the great effort that Jesus took for for us to save us. The pa- that's what the passion looked like, and there was a purpose, like I said, for us. Let's read Jeremiah forty-eight. A, a specific pre- representation of God is being shown. Jeremiah chapter forty-eight, verses thirty-one. Therefore, I wail for Moab. I cry out. For all Moab, for the men of Kir Hareset, I mourn. More than for Jasser, I weep for you. Verse 36. Therefore my heart moans for Moab like a flute, and my heart moans like a flute for the men of Kir Hareset. We see a picture of a God who is crying. This struck me because up until then, the picture of the Lord, the picture of the God of Israel, is a mighty God who who parts the Red Sea, who brings plagues upon Egyptians, who is a mother to Israel, but who also punishes Israel with great punishments as well. And then in Jeremiah, we see a weeping God, a man of sorrows for his children who have turned back from him. A God who cries. Think of a moment in your life when you saw someone burst into tears, and obviously, when we see their sorrows and lamentation, it moves us. But it's but it's so hard to to read that God weeps for us as well. But if we saw it, how great of a grief would we would we feel, beloveds? Let us remember that Jesus put his everything in the fight to gain us, every ounce of himself, as a show of his ardent love for us. Yes, we were the cause of his death but we were the reason for his pursuit. We were the reason for it, the passion that he put into saving us. Song of Solomon chapter 8 verse 6, it says, For love is strong as death, jealousy is fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. Love is strong as death. Think of, think of this, maybe the Lord used this as an argument against the, the enemy at the cross. The argument of the Lord over us against death. My love for my children, for my bride, is just as strong as the death that I will face. John chapter 15 verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. 
We know that fire is dangerous, it can burn, but that's the exact state of God's love for us. The very flame of the Lord, the origin of the of the fire is from the Lord himself. 1 John 4, 19, we love, we are able to love with passion, with great in intensity because God first loved us. The source, the origin of love is from the Lord himself. Brothers and sisters, maybe at the end of this, we can realize that the passion of the Lord we, we just see the sufferings, the endurance, the, the, the whippings, the, the, the slaps, the everything that Jesus endured physically. But behind it all, the purpose was running after us. The purpose was to save us, to redeem us because of his great love for us. May you know this. May you be blessed by this. God bless him.